All right. Go ahead and get started. I'll we'll I'll see if I can mess around with this for a minute and if it doesn't okay, work. That I'll sounds good. Play. Okay, thanks for your patience, everybody. Um all right. Hi, I'm Sally Flashberger from the Board of People with Developmental Disabilities. Um we are here for Living Well Wednesday. Um maybe it's the rain that's uh stopping us from connecting because it's raining at my house. <laughs> but we're um excited today to have um Jenny and Wendy here. Um uh, from the Wisconsin Disability Vote Coalition. And they're really um, gonna go through some of the things that we need to know about the upcoming election and how to be prepared to vote. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to them because they're the experts in this area. So thanks for joining us, take it over. Thank you, Sally. We're so happy to be invited back again. Um, we'll introduce ourselves. Wendy, do you wanna go first? Sure. I'm Wendy Hine, and I work for Disability Rights Wisconsin doing voting outreach and advocacy. Um, we are a statewide, uh, we, we, we have a statewide focus, um, uh, and we uh, right now are just trying to get people um, help with getting absentee ballots and with getting registered and any other difficulties that they may have with uh, casting a vote uh, with for, for the presidential uh, election in November. So, um, and I, I partner with Jenny um, and lots of other partners statewide to uh, do the Wisconsin Disability Vote Coalition. And I'm Jenny Newgart. I am with the Wisconsin Board for People with Developmental Disabilities. And as Wendy said, um, between BPDD and, and Disability Rights Wisconsin, we have this vote coalition. Um, we are nonpartisan, um, so our, yeah, our goal is just to make sure people with disabilities know their rights and how to get registered and are active in the um, electoral process. So um, we've been part of Living Well was Wednesday before, um, but this time, you know, we're about a month out from the election now, and um, one of the sticking points that people with disabilities continue to run into problems with is the photo ID requirement. So we're really gonna zero in on those issues. And if we have time at the end, we're happy to answer any, um, any voting questions you may have in general. Um, there's a lot of information on these slides, like phone numbers and websites and things like that. Um, and I, I believe you, you um, are able to post this PowerPoint so people can access it so you don't have to worry about trying to capture all that while we go through it. So um, just um, an overview of what Wisconsin's photo ID requirements are. Um, I think everybody pretty much knows that um, in Wisconsin, you have to show an acceptable photo ID when you're voting at the polls on election day. And if you're requesting an absentee ballot, you must provide a photo ID unless you provided it with a previous request. So if you request an absentee ballot online or you um, do a mail-in request, you only have to provide the photo ID once and once it's in the system, you're done. You don't have to provide it every time you make a request, um, which was which is very nice. There are a couple exemptions to that or people who don't have to do that and we will talk about that a little bit later. Um, it, there's a lot of um, misinformation about this as well. The, the photo ID for voting does not have to have your current address. That is only a concern when you're registering. You need a photo ID that matches the current address. But if you go to vote and you've moved and it doesn't match, um, you're okay. Um, all the information about photo ID is available at bringit.wi.gov. It's a wonderful website. Um, and that would be where we would say if you have any questions about, about photo ID, go there first. So this is a nice little handout we have that shows examples of what acceptable photo IDs are. Obviously a Wisconsin driver's license is what most people use. Um, you can also get a state ID card issued. We're gonna talk about how you can get a free ID for voting. Um, you can use a passport, um, Internet affairs, you could even use um, a 
photo identification from a university or a tech college. Um, and even we're going to also talk about this, but if you've gone to apply and you don't get your, your, the ID right away, the receipt is considered um, an acceptable photo ID. So who can apply for a free photo ID for voting? It's any Wisconsin resident who doesn't already have a valid driver's license. So if you have a valid driver's license, that would, that's what you would be expected to use. If you don't have that, and a lot of people that we work with with disabilities um, don't have driver's licenses, you can apply for a free ID card. You can't have a valid driver's license and an ID card at the same time. Um, so if for some reason you had a driver's license and you wanted an ID card, you would have to give up your driving privileges to do that. Um, and, and there's another slide later, but that could be like, um, you know, maybe somebody who's older who doesn't um, really drive anymore and that wouldn't be an issue. Um, it could get an ID card that they wouldn't have to um, renew as often. There's no age limit to apply for an ID card, so 18 up. And there, there is a non-expiring ID card for residents 65 and older. And again, we have a slide just on that um, a little later in the presentation. Where to go for a free photo ID is your um, DMV, the Department of Voter, Motor Vehicles. You can find the office nearest you at that website or you could just Google it and there is a phone number there that you can call as well to find the nearest location. A little tricky right now because since COVID, um, DMV hours have definitely been affected um, and, and offices closing and things like that. So you definitely want to plan ahead. And then planning your visit to the DMV, you want to contact the DMV voter hotline. Um, to make your plan for getting a photo ID. And that's just helpful so that you know exactly what you need. You have your kind of ducks in a row um, and, and you can make sure that you handle everything, you know, when you're at the DMV and you're not forgetting something and it becomes a big hassle. So it's, it's nice, just like we always say with voting to make a plan, make a plan for um, getting your free ID as well. Um, there's a Dane County, Wisconsin Voter ID Coalition that helps um, voters who don't have an accessible photo ID get one. So that's really their focus is how do you get this free ID, including help with figuring out transportation, which again is a huge barrier. And if you don't have a driver's license, transportation to get your uh, uh, photo ID is going to be difficult. Um, there's that number there. I know it's a little confusing because it's a 608 number, but that is that does serve people statewide. Um, so anybody can call there and get that assistance. And then I think I'm switching it over to Wendy. Yeah, so um, I'm going to talk to you about things to know before you visit the DMV uh, service centers. Um, many DMV locations have limited hours, as Jenny just mentioned, uh, because of COVID-19. And, and some have even closed. So again, our suggestion is on that slide um, before it showed you the, the number for the, to find your DMV location. And um, we would suggest that you call that number, you go online and check uh, that what those hours are and to make sure that that location is open. Um, you cannot mail your paperwork in to get your free ID. So it's something that you have to do in person. Um, and some offices have Saturday morning hours that there's a list there. The rest tend to be just weekdays. So we've heard especially from parts of the state that are um, don't have any big cities that this can be a challenge. So again, Jenny talked about planning ahead and um, if there's really limited hours, uh, it's, it's something that may take some planning for you. Um, so uh, maybe we can go on to the next slide. We're going to talk about um, what you're going to, what you need. Um, oh, uh, sorry. Um, the things, some more things to know is that um, 
you can ask for reasonable accommodations uh, at the DMV center. So that means that if there's a line and standing is difficult for you, um, you can actually go to the front of the line and let the staff person know. It doesn't mean you can skip the line, um, but it does mean that you can go to the front, say, hey, I'm here, but I can't stand on that line. Um, I'm gonna sit down and they'll, they'll indicate maybe where to sit and then they'll kind of hold your place in line and when it gets to be your turn, they'll call you up there. Um, so that, that's a, a reasonable accommodation that you can certainly ask for. Um, you can't bring your pet along uh, to a DMV center, um, but if you have a service animal, um, a trained service animal, you, you are of always welcome to bring that animal. But, but if you just have a dog that likes to come with you because he likes to get out, then the DMV probably isn't the right place for him. Um, and again, there's that recommendation to contact um, that DMV voter hotline. I feel like we can't say that enough to check what things you need and if they're open, when they're open. Um, a thing that you should remember is that the DMV offers lots of services. So a lot of people are coming there to get driver's licenses or to get something changed on their license. They offer a lot of different things. You need to specifically be asking for the free ID for voting. Um, so, so that's the wording that you should use, free ID for voting. Um, you're going to need some things to, to apply for your free ID. Uh, so you need proof of your name and date of birth. And we're going to talk about what some of those things that would prove your name and date of birth are. Proof of your identity. So that's like proof that, you, that I'm really Wendy Hine or that you're really who you say you are. Um, proof of your Wisconsin residency, proof that you live here uh, and that, that you're voting in the state where you live. Proof of your U.S. citizenship, so, so that means that you're a U.S. citizen and your social security number. Um, so we're going to talk about what are acceptable documents for proof of name and proof of birth. Um, so to prove your name, you could use your uh, U.S. passport or passport card if you happen to have a passport that's valid. You could use that. Um, you can use uh, your birth certificate. You can use um, a birth certificate from abroad. If, if you were born overseas, you can use that certificate. Um, if you have a permanent resident card, if, you, if you're a permanent resident, you can use that. Um, if you have a US certificate of naturalization, you can use that. Um, a, a certificate of US citizenship works. Um, an employment author authorization document works if it's not expired, it has to be current. Or um, a pa foreign passport with a valid uh, US visa, that would work too, it can't be expired. So then you have to prove your date of birth. Um, you could use a foreign passport, a Wisconsin driver's license proves that, a Wisconsin ID card, a permanent resident card, a federal I-94 arrival departure record, or again, that employment authorization document, um, but it can't be expired, or that foreign passport um, with the, the, the US visa, those can't be expired. So if you notice, some of those documents are listed in both categories, they prove both. And so um, that would be, a, sorry about that, that would be, a. Um, you know, kind of kill two birds with one stone thing to bring those documents. So um, now we're going to talk about um, what if you don't have all those documents and you need, you want to vote, but you just don't have all the, you don't have your birth certificate or you don't have, um, you, you don't have all the things that you need. Um, so what you can do is you can still get a photo ID. So you bring the documents that you do have to the DMV. So you go through that list and you find what you do have to prove, to prove um, your name and date of birth, your identity, your residency, um, and your social. Uh, you don't have to have your social security card. You just have to know the number. Um, so um, you go through the documents, find what you do have. And then when you go to the DMV, you're going to have to fill out two forms. You're going to have to complete these forms. Uh, the the MV3004 and MV3012. You don't have to remember the names of the forms. When you ask the 
uh, the DMV worker, they will hand you those forms. So then you, that would mean that in your planning, you're gonna wanna allow a little bit of extra time because it's gonna take you some time to fill those paperwork out um, at the DMV. So um, if you are going through your documents and you're feeling confused about this, again, there's that phone number for the voter ID hotline. Um, and that's just a great resource for you to um, get yourself organized beforehand, answer any questions that you have. So we went through all those documents. We talked about this whole list of documents and you're probably thinking like, like wow, this is overwhelming. But um, if you just go through it when you're ready to go um, and, and just pull out your documents as you go, it's not quite as overwhelming. If you already have an unexpired driver's license or ID card, um, or one that's uh, expired since the last election, you actually have what you need to vote. So you don't need to do, be worrying about what an ID to vote. Um, the Wisconsin driver's license or ID card is acceptable photo ID for voting. So you have what you need. You don't need a separate card just for voting. Um, I think uh, Jenny's going to talk to you a little bit about the super cool receipts that you get with, with these. <laughs> so when you go in there um, to get this, um, they'll give you a receipt and there's um, a picture of what it would look like um, that will include your photo. And you need to save that because if you don't get your identify the actual card in time, that is a valid um, uh, form of ID that you can use for voting purposes. So make sure you hang on to that receipt. That's just good practice anyway. Um, whenever you go to get a license um, renewed or something to hang on to that until your card, the actual card comes. So we're gonna talk a little bit about photo ID and absentee voting. Um, which is a little bit different. And I had mentioned um, the, the groups of people that were exempt from having to provide a photo ID when absentee voting. So this, we're gonna start getting into details about that. So there's, there's the, these four groups and the first two in particular um, really um, I think are the most relevant to probably the, the people watching here. And definitely can find voters um, are something we're still spending a lot of time spreading the word about that people aren't necessarily familiar with. And an indefinitely confined voter is someone who has a hard time getting to the polls because maybe they're, um, because of their age or they're ill or they have some sort of disability that makes it difficult. It doesn't mean they can't leave their house or that they're confined to bed, but that they just have difficulty getting to the, to the polls. Um, you can self-certify that you are indefinitely confined. So it, it's up to you. You don't have to provide like a, a doctor's note that verifies that you're indefinitely confined or anything like that. You, you decide. Um, and then you can request your absentee ballots get sent to you for every election and they will just automatically be sent until you don't return one. Um, in which case you would have to um, make the request again to start getting them back. And if you ever, if you choose to be indefinitely confined and decide you um, don't want that option anymore, you can just let your municipal clerk know um, and um, you can go back to voting in person or however you choose to do. Um, the, the thing about indefinitely confined is you are not required to send a photo ID with your request. Um, so it, instead, what you do is have a witness sign the absentee ballot certification envelope, which everyone has to have a witness signature, um, but that verifies the voter's identity. Um, and the Wisconsin Election Commission does consider COVID a reason to choose and definitely confine. So if you're a person um, who's in a high risk category, um, for getting COVID, if you're immunocompromised, um, you know, heart issues, breathing, anything like that, that um, would put you in a high risk category, uh, you could choose to be indefinitely confined for that reason. Um, 
voters that are in special care facilities, nursing homes, group homes, things like that, um, can also designate and definitely can find on their ballot request. So whether you fill out the paper ballot to request an absentee ballot, there's a place on there, or if you do it online, um, there's a box that you check in the My Vote Wisconsin website. Um, again, the witness signature on that envelope verifies the identity. Um, in both cases, if you're voting in person, you still have to show the ID. This is only for absentee voting. Um, and then you've got confidential electors. That's something you actually apply for and you would receive a court order. It's typically used with domestic abuse cases and people wanting to protect their identity so um, somebody can't find them, um, those kinds of things. So that's um, a special case. And then any active military or permanent overseas voters um, are not required to provide a photo ID if they vote absentee. Again, if, they, they're, if they're back home from being overseas and they vote in person, they do have to have that ID. So what we need to be concerned about really is the indefinitely confined voters and the voters at special care facilities. Uh, and then a little more about the, the voting at, at special care facilities. Um, again, you, you self-certify that you're indefinitely confined, so you don't have to provide the photo ID. Um, it's, that's not like really a workaround. Um, I'm going to choose that so I don't have to do the ID. I mean, you really um, need to consider, you know, the, the reason why um, you might choose to be indefinitely confined. Um, and for legal reasons, the witness signature verifies the identity, which is what the photo ID is doing. If the voter's not considered indefinitely confined and has a photo ID, provide it to the clerk or upload it in the My Vote website. Um, if the voter ID is not indefinitely confined and does not have an acceptable photo ID, um, people also don't know about this, the care facility administrator can sign a special certificate and the numbers there to verify the voter's identity. Um, so again, that's if they don't have an ID and they don't consider themselves indefinitely confined, um, you can still um, have the administrator sign so you don't have to provide that ID. Um, just because they know that people in care facility have an even extra barrier to getting a valid photo ID. So requesting an absentee ballot this is a screenshot of the My Vote Wisconsin website. If you're not familiar with that website, um, I would definitely go in there and get yourself familiar with it. Um, I use it for everything. You can register here, request your ballot, check your, the status of your ballot, find out who your municipal clerk is. Um, you can find out, you can see exactly what's gonna be on your ballot. It's, it's fantastic. Um, but we took a screenshot when you're um, at one of the screens on here requesting your ballot and you can see where the arrow is. Um, all you do is check that box and again you're self-certifying. You don't have to upload documentation or anything like that. So pretty simple online. And then um, I had mentioned this before, the non-expiring ID cards available for those ages 65 and older. Um, so if anybody's working like with the aging population, um, this would be really relevant. The ID card is free for voting purposes. And like Wendy said, when you go to the DMV, you wanna say, I want the free ID for voting. Um, once it's issued, it never needs to be renewed. So if you're 65 and older, that's a real nice, you don't have to go back to the DMV anymore. If you um, have a driver's license, and you want to get the non-expiring ID card, you do have to give up your driver's license and your driving privileges. And I immediately thought of my mother-in-law who's like 82, she hasn't driven in four years. Um, she really doesn't need her driver's license anymore. So she could exchange it for this and then she never has to worry about going back to the DMV again. Um, individuals holding a real ID uh, must surrender that feature from their card Real ID compliant cards continue to follow the eight year renewal cycle. That's getting a little bit into the weeds for, for what we're doing here. Um, but they, they look the same and have the same security features as an eight year card. 
um, and the words non-expiring replace the expiration date. Um, and again, just a reminder, all these cards are mailed, so you need to um, hold on to that receipt until you get your card. All right, back to Wendy. Hi. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about uh, photo ID and, and voter registration. That, that website that Jenny just showed you, uh, My Vote Wisconsin, when you use that, it's going to require you to have an, a current Wisconsin driver's license or Wisconsin ID card. And so um, what it'll do is it'll ask you for that number. Um, that The screenshot that she showed you um, where there was that little yellow arrow that um, pointed to indefinitely confined. So if you go in to register on that screen and you do not choose indefinitely confined, the very next screen will ask you um, for your driver's license number or your Wisconsin ID card number. And then um, it's gonna ask you to take a photograph of your driver's license or your Wisconsin ID card and upload that. Um, I was really nervous to do this for some, I had never um, absentee voted in this way before in, in April, then it became, or in March, it became obvious that I wasn't going to go into the polling place. And so I was really, for some reason, and I, I use my phone all the time, so I just can't imagine why I was so nervous about this, but I was really nervous to take the picture and upload it like somehow this was going to be hard. And so, no, I, I sat on the couch with my whole family in there and like 20 things going on and it took me two seconds. So if you have a phone and you use the internet, um, this is actually not scary, it's not hard. Um, but you do, you do need to have that current ID or you need to be considered indefinitely confined. Um, so um, if you don't have that current ID, if you have the expired ID, or um, if you uh, have, are using alternate um, ID forms, uh, you need to use the paper form to register or you, you would go in person to your municipal clerk as well. Um, so along with the paper form, you need an acceptable proof of residence document um, and your uh, Wisconsin driver's license ID number or the last four digits of your social security number. Um, and you can download that paper registration from the uh, Wisconsin Election Commission website. You can also, if you don't have a computer and printer, you can call your municipal clerk and you can um, ask them to send you that form. Next slide. So that's the picture of the paper form here on the Wisconsin Election Commission website. Some of the larger municipalities, Milwaukee as an example, have um, a Milwaukee specific form for registration, um, but, but this one would also work even if you live in Milwaukee. Um, and so that's the form on the Wisconsin Election Commission website that you would fill out. Um, it's a, a little smaller print, uh, but, um, and if you would need any help with that, you can certainly call us at the 1-800 number uh, and we would be glad to help you out, so. Next slide. So, and that's the, uh, the myvotewisconsin.gov website that Jenny uh, showed you. The, the screen that Jenny showed you is a screen after this. It would be, um, so if you chose, if you look at that My Vote website, at the top are, is a gray bar, and then it has all these darker squares in it. And then down below that are little blue circles, or big blue circles, I guess, depending on your opinion. Um, but you can choose different things to do. You can choose to get your voter info. You can choose to find your polling place. You can choose to see your ballot, what would be on your ballot. You can choose to update your name and address. You can choose to register to vote or to vote absentee. So the screen that Jenny showed you was, if I click to register to vote, that's the screen that would come up when I clicked register to vote. And so um, you can go to this website and you can complete the full reg voter registration right here at myvote.wi.gov as well as filling out that paper form. So let's talk about voter registration deadlines then. 
Um, or actually, let's talk about the difference between your proof of residence and your photo ID. Sorry about that. I think I uh, have the my slides mixed up here. So, um, so uh, it gets a little bit murky. The the people feel confused about proof of residence and photo ID. So you need a proof of residence to register to vote. Proof of residence shows the um, the government that you live where you say you live, that you're voting from the place where you live. So that's what the proof of residence document um, is for, and that's for registration purposes. You need the photo ID to vote. So um, you also need it when you register online to show that you're, you're the person who's, sorry, my computer. Um, when, when to show that you're the person who is, it, it kind of adds that aspect when you're, um, when you're doing it online because it's to verify that you're the person uh, who's registering. So um, if you look at this, this is a really nice layout uh, of, of what the difference between proof of residence and photo ID is. So sometimes the same document can serve both purposes. So if you have a current ID, that has your current address on it, it can be both. It can be um, your proof of residence and your photo ID, because it does both. Just like uh, earlier in, the, in, the, uh, in this PowerPoint, we talked about how sometimes the, the same document can serve several purposes. So, so that current photo ID with the current address would serve both purposes. If your current, if your photo ID, uh, doesn't have your current address, uh, then it would only be good for photo ID. It just proves who you are. It doesn't prove where you live. So then you would need a proof of residence document. So a utility bill can be your, your proof of residence document, um, like a Medicaid uh, a letter from a, because Medicaid is a government entity, that would work. Um, a pay stub or a bank statement would work. Um, and those things would, for proof of residence, they need to show your current name and your current address. Um, you can actually show a copy of that document, or you can even show a picture of it from your phone your, or your iPad or whatever, an electronic device. Um, so those things are for proof of residence, to show you live where you say that you live. Um, and they, all those documents for proof of residence have to be within the last three months, within the last 90 days. They have to be current because they want to know that you currently live there. Um, for photo ID, again, you can use a US passport if you have one or that driver's license. Um, it actually can be expired to use it for photo ID. Um, it would have to be since the November 8th, 2016. Um, and even if your license is revoked for some reason, you can still use it for photo ID. Um, or if you're a veteran and you have a military ID, that works as well. Um, so this, these IDs for photo ID purposes don't need to have your current address because you would be proving your current address with that uh, proof of residence. Um, so that gets confusing, I know. Um, so, uh, but they do need to show that you're, show your name um, as it's on your registration. So, okay, next slide. So the proof of residence document, um, we're gonna, we just talked about that. Uh, when you go to myvote.wi.gov, your, your driver's license or your ID card is serving as that. Um, if you register by mail, you are sending a copy of that along. Um, uh, you can use an intake document or contract from a group home or nursing home and in that case, you don't need to provide your room number. You can look at that MyVote website um, under proof of residence, and it will show you every document that's, that's, um, uh, that you can use for proof of residence. I might not have said some of those. So next slide. OK, let's talk about the deadlines. So uh, if we want to register by mail or online, that deadline is October 14th. So that's coming up quickly. Um, if you want to go in person to your municipal office, uh, that would be October 30th, so the end of the month. 
and you can still, this is a cool thing in Wisconsin, you can still register on election day uh, at your polling place. So that's November 3rd. And um, we just wanna make sure that you understand there are some court cases right now um, in the state. So some of these dates might change. Uh, our suggestion is always the sooner the better. So, um, but, but in Wisconsin, you'll always have the right to register on election day. So that's not something that's, uh, that's being discussed. You will have that right at your polling place. So um, next slide. So these are some key resources um, that bringit.wi.gov. That is the website that um, I mentioned to you has all the, um, all the uh, information that you would need here that you would need to get your ID. Um, it can be um, a little bit confusing. So remember I said, kind of go through it beforehand and make a plan. Um, you can find your municipal clerk that there's a website there in case you need to call for more information uh, or call the DMV voter hotline. And then I just want to point out to you um, the Disability Rights Wisconsin voter hotline number down below. Um, I actually usually answer that. So um, you can call me there and I can help you uh, walk through anything about this that you feel like is difficult. That's what it's my job to do. Um, I like to help people and it, it makes me happy to know that you're voting. So feel free to call us and, and just keep this handy. These are great resources. Um, should we? I think this was our last slide. Yeah, do, do questions? Yeah. I know it's awfully complicated. Our, our voting system is, is so complicated. Um, and certainly you're not expected to remember all this, but really the point that we, we wanna make is there are resources out there um, and just make you aware of it, like bring it and the disability, um, the, the voter hotline, um, just so you know where to go, not that you attend this and are supposed to know what to do now. <laughs> I do have somebody who had their hand up the whole time, so yeah. um, I'll see if we can unmute that person because they're on the phone. Okay. Um, so if you're on the phone, if you could unmute yourself if you had a question, because you're muted. But maybe not. Um, I just had a question with a lot of the things we've seen in the news on the absentee ballots and the dates. You know, um, what if they, you guys are updating that frequently, right, on like the Facebook page or on the website. So that, that would be a good place for people to look if there's changes to some of these uh, legal challenges or changes? The best place would be to like us on our Facebook page. Okay. Um, and it's just uh, Wisconsin Disability Vote Coalition um, because we will post stuff immediately about, you know, court rulings and things like that. But yeah, we also have a frequently asked questions document that I swear sometimes can get updated twice a day. <laughs> In the April election, we were updating that two, three times a day because things change so fast. Okay. Um, people yeah, are, that. I think it makes it really confusing for people when things are changing all the time and it makes it really stressful. Um, I know a lot of people have been really stressed out about getting their absentee ballots um, because they keep hearing things on the news about mail delays and about, um, I, I don't really know, but, but they, they just feel really there's just a climate of people feeling really nervous about this. And I get calls probably at least two a day on the 1-800 number. Um, and I can actually look up on the MyVote website to see where people's, I, I can update you. So um, if you're feeling, if you're hearing something about dates changing or something, cause that could happen still, they could still change. There are some things happening um, so dates could be extended, um, but then if they're, I think at this point they are going to be extended, but that could change still. Right. Um, and so I think, I think two things. 
If you have your absentee ballot, just get it back as soon as you can. Do all this as soon as possible in case things change. Um, I mean, it's not gonna be before, no, it's not gonna change to be sooner than November 3rd. Um, so if you have your stuff in by November 3rd, you're, you're all good, you don't have to worry. Um, but then the other thing is if you, if you do uh, run into confusion, do call us. You are never bothering us. We are always happy to answer your questions. And honestly, we, we have our, in our email, we're getting updates all the time from the Wisconsin Election Commission, from different area uh, election commissions. And we're like, it takes a lot for us to, to sometimes keep up with all of it. And we have a whole team that's, that's working on that. So it doesn't, it's never dumb to ask. It's very hard to follow. And we are here to help you with that. So again, and we're always posting on the on our Facebook page any updates that happen. So as Jenny said, follow us if you're on Facebook. Call us if you have questions. Hey, Wendy, this is Ramsey. I'm, I'm on the phone. Thanks for hosting this. Uh, uh, my question was you mentioned. Um, the DMV phone hotline. What is that phone number? Hi, Ramsey. Um, that DMV number is a, a DMV number that the DMV provides and staffs, and they can answer questions for people that are specific to um, difficulties that they're or confusion that they have about getting their free photo ID. So they, okay, what, what is that number? Any idea? Yeah. Um, I know it was in the PowerPoint if you want to pull it back up, but maybe then just tell him because he can't, he's I not can, on the. Yep, and I can post it in the um, group chat too, but I can tell you out loud now. Yep. It's, yeah, if you said tell us out loud for those of us who are on the phone, that'd be great. <laughs> Sure, it's it's eight four four. Eight four four. Mm hmm. Five eight eight. Five eight eight. Mm hmm. One zero six nine. Five eight eight. Ten One. six fifty nine. Yep. Five eight thank eight. Thank you eight. for having this, and thank you for hosting it. Thank you for coming. If, if you guys need any help with uh, the process, let me know because I'm always trying to get the word out. Uh. Thanks, the other Rain, thing I want to. Oh, sorry. The other thing I want to let people know about um, because I, I don't think a lot of people do um, if you request an absentee ballot, and it does not come in time, you can still go vote in person. So right now, there's plenty of time to request your ballot, get it, and send it back in. But if it's if you start hearing about people, it's getting close, um, and they don't get it, people think that, oh, well, I requested the ballot, I can't do it. But if it didn't come and you didn't vote absentee, you can go in person on election day and still cast your vote. Yeah, that's important. I yeah. would just say I we got our absentee ballots right after the date when they could send them. Um, I we I did take them back in person. We have a drop box at our city hall, so I did that. But I did that Monday night, and they've already updated the um, my vote website. So I think that's good. Um, I know in an earlier election this year they weren't updating it as quickly, and I think a lot of municipalities got. A lot of calls so um just you know it's a good way to track that i know they received it and they put marked it on that my vote so just oh. an excellent way to track it a large yeah. volume of our calls at the uh disability vote call uh disability rights wisconsin voter hotline this last couple weeks have been milwaukee voters who are um permanent uh who are indefinitely confined voters and so they always get an absentee ballot and their ballots have not come. And so I've been in communication with the Milwaukee Elections Commission and they did say that those may take another week. So um, 
they had a very large volume this year um, and it's all in process. So, uh, but it's, it's really got a lot of people feeling nervous. Well, and I think that's an important thing to know. Like if you're sitting at home thinking, oh, I just didn't get my one ballot. If you call Wendy, then she can at least call, help right. and call somewhere else. And, and maybe it's not just one ballot, you know, maybe it is, you know, that there's more people experiencing that, but, but just good to be in contact with you to make sure yeah. that, um, uh, so, you know, things are running more smoothly. And so, I, I actually have some voters who I call them every, I've been calling them every week to, and we check their, like I put them on my calendar, I call them and we check their my vote to see if their ballot got received or to see, because there are people who don't use the computer, so, um, but they really want to check that. That's great. Um, all right, I don't think there's any more questions. We really appreciate you joining us again and, you know, who knows, we may, we may have another one, you know. <laughs> We may, we may get on again if there's a quick update, but we'll we'll try to keep people informed. You know, great resources on their Facebook page, their website. You know, those are the places to be looking for any updates. Um, and uh, just thanks for coming. So I'm gonna stop everything.